Now, former DA leader and now one South African movement activist, Musi Maimane, says the Department of Basic Education's plan to re reopen schools is a dangerous one. Maimane says the decision will put many children's lives at risk, and he plans to lobby parents and education stakeholders to stop the move. Maimane joins us now on the line to talk more about his efforts. Mr. Maimane, a very good morning to you, and uh, thank you for your time. You've warned that opening schools at this stage poses a risk and a danger to all learners. Talk Talk us through some of your concerns. Good morning and good morning to fellow South Africans. Um, it is absolutely vital that we recognize that at this time in our nation, we've inherited a deeply divided education system. The majority of schools in our country still don't have basic running water and sanitation. Many of our kids who travel to school use public transport that is dependent on them being loaded like sardines. And so when you then deal with a virus like COVID that in fact wants to enforce social distancing, our schools can literally become petri dishes where the virus can spread into not only the schools, but into communities. There hasn't been an assurance on the part of basic education that all measures have been taken in place, particularly in the majority of our schools where there can be adequate testing for teachers and for learners, and ultimately ensuring that the proper PPE can be, brought, can be delivered to schools. The Department of Education has a history of being able to not meet its own deadlines. And so, therefore, when you go for a deadline like the 1st of June, I think you are asking millions of children to be put at risk, and you are asking educators to also be put at risk without the thorough preparation. So we believe fundamentally as one South African movement, we are poorly, poorly prepared for this, and parents need to be able to stand up. And that's why we've put together a, permit, a petition where we are asking them to stand up and say this decision is, is premature and it doesn't give us enough time to prepare for the reopening of schools. And how will that process work when it comes to the petition? Um, what sort of interaction and reaction are you hoping to get from it? Absolutely. We've now, we've now gone over 10,000 uh, uh, citizens who have gone on there and I'm encouraging more to go on change.org to sign the petition. What we do subsequent to, to that, I've already written to the Department of Education in the Ministry of Basic Education and we're writing to the Department of Higher Education subsequent to that is that there are parliamentary processes upon which citizens like yourself and myself can submit our petitions to say, we think this decision can put our kids' lives in danger. The Constitution articulates very strongly that, in fact, we must put the interests of the child first and foremost. And as one South Africa movement, we want to protect our kids, protect the teachers, and make sure that as schools are centers of communities, that our communities are protected from this very dangerous virus. And at this point in time, what is the most uh, sensible approach or perhaps a choice that the uh, education department should be considering? I think the Department of Education should give itself three months. It should then go ahead and do an audit of all the schools. It must prepare a roadmap to opening, which makes sure that schools all have PPEs, that test, testing equipment is delivered, that water is built into, uh, is poured into those schools, that in fact we can exercise the proper curriculum that makes sure that we're not rushing through the curriculum, but that we have a COVID-related curriculum, and that we ensure that we deal with the transport dynamics to make sure that kids are not getting into schools packed up in sardines. And we've made a number of proposals that equally make sure that online learning becomes part of the supplementary component that we can bring in to education so that more and more learners are also be able to participate in the digital economy. Mr. Maimane, do you think that the 2020 academic year is still salvageable at, at this point in time? I think that the 2020 academic year on two sectors, the grade 7 and the grade 12, we need to prepare curriculum on what they need to be able to get post that. The idea that we must complete the entire curriculum for 2020 is a misnomer and something we will not be able to achieve. It would be a mistake for us to try and pursue that. Therefore, what we must do is adjust curriculum for this year and say, for the remaining part of the year, this is the aspects that we will cover. And we can do additional catch-up year in the following year for the rest of the grades if we're able to put together a plan that works. We can then assess how we can um, graduate grade 12s for those who need to move on into the next year and deal with universities in that regard by creating bridging courses. But the idea that suddenly we're going to catch up what has been lost in this year is simply a misnomer.
And now looking at a, a different matter, you recently stepped down from the DA. You still have a foot in politics. And uh, we know that you have a great relationship with the People's Dialogue leader, Herman Mashaba. Is there any point where we'll see some sort of collaboration in the future? We're building a One South Africa movement which is a grassroots-based movement that coalesces different South Africans all over the world with a focus of activism. And I certainly am building all across with various structures. And if the People's Dialogue is open to being a part of that movement, we're not shutting the door out to that. But certainly, I believe that the future of South Africa, politics has brought us to a point where we are at now. To simply just say you're just adding more uh, a political party of that nature isn't going to resolve our immediate problem. We need to demonstrate higher activism. We need to show people that we can do in partnership with citizens and work together to build a grassroots movement. So that is what One South Africa Movement is committed to. And I'm inviting South Africans from different walks of life to be part of One South Africa Movement because we can all collectively be able to be a solution to the challenges that South Africa faces. And we can be active and in our communities right where we are, rather than simply as political parties have a history and a pattern of doing which is just talking. And we've seen it now, even in the time of COVID, what happened. So you can neither confirm nor deny whether or not you'll be working with Mr. Mashaba? No, at this point in time, we are not working together. Mr. Mashaba is starting a political party. I'm simply saying that in the long run, if the People's Dialogue wants to be a part of a movement, that is one South Africa and be a part of that, we would welcome them. We are not shut off to working with them, but they focused on a different project at this point as we're focused on building with all South Africans at this point. And very lastly, as you speak about the future, looking ahead at the political landscape, what are some of the major changes that you foresee, um, especially looking at the current environment and the political landscape? I think that without doubt, our politics in this country will require a different mandate. It's very clear at this point in time that inter-party politics and intra-party politics have become toxic. We're discussing factions and therefore the country cannot move ahead. We haven't articulated a vision for where our nation is, has to go. And so that's why we're saying that if we build a one South Africa, an inclusive economy, and where there's an equitable education for all citizens, we build a health care response that makes sure that the, everyone is protected and then focus on the future. Citizens can coalesce towards that, work towards a new future. So the only future for politics in this country must be one that is born out of, a, out of movement and grassroots level so that the 17 million South Africans who are disengaged from politics can be engaged because ultimately democracy requires that more citizens participate in it. And so my, my future and the future of our nation as far as politics is concerned, if we just keep what we've always got, we'll get what we've always got. And therefore, I'm calling that we need a change, we need a reform, we need to work back with citizens and then mobilize on that basis. Absolutely. Thank you so much uh, for your time, uh, Chief Activist at One South Africa Movement, uh, Musi Maimane, there, giving us a sense of his input on uh, Minister Angie Mutsekha's decision to reopen schools. And